In this video, I'm going to show you how to create the infinite loop effect in Final Cut Pro. I'll also give you three tips on how to shoot for this effect to make your life easier in editing. If that sounds good to you, please hit that like button. An early like always helps the channel out. And let's dive into the shooting section of this video. When it comes to shooting this effect, you need to shoot your shots using a tripod so that the camera doesn't move. That's super important. And you'll want to make sure that your camera settings like your white balance, exposure and focus are manually set so that nothing changes in between takes or in the middle of a shot. Now that your camera is ready, go ahead and shoot a couple of different takes of your subject walking in and out of the frame. You can either loop your favorite take to create an infinite loop of just that one action, or you can mix it up with a few different takes to create a more interesting and varied infinite loop. Lastly, when you're done shooting the different takes, you'll need to shoot what is called a clean plate. At the end of your last take, when you walk out of the frame, leave your camera rolling for about 30 seconds or so, so that you have a shot of just the background without the subject. In some cases, you can create this clean plate in post, but it's always a good idea to shoot your own clean plate just in case. Especially if you have some movement in the background, maybe clouds moving in the sky, or maybe something like this plant blowing in the wind. Ideally, you don't want any movement in the background behind your subject because that's difficult to mask out in editing. But if you have some movement in an area that doesn't overlap with your subject, it'll enhance the effect. Let's head over into Final Cut and the first thing I'm going to do is select all the clips that I need, starting with the first time I walk out the door. So I'll hit Alt and the square bracket to trim at the beginning and I'm going to play this clip all the way until I walk out of frame, somewhere about there and I'll hit Command B. Then I'll select the second clip, again when I come out the door, and when I walk out of the frame, I'll hit Command B. I've got one more take, so I'll hit Alt in the left square bracket, and I'll run this clip until I walk out of the frame. Then I left the camera rolling so I could get my clean plate, and that's what this whole section is over here, so I'm going to keep that just like that. Next, I need to put these two clips on top of this clip. So I'll select them and hit Command Alt and the up arrow to lift it from the primary storyline. And I'll do it again to remove that little group. I'll set the opacity of both of these clips to 50%. And then I'll scrub along until I sort of look to the side here, somewhere around there. And then I'll bring in the second take. I'll hit N to just disable the snapping. And then I'm going to use shift and the greater than and less than signs to kind of move this clip into position. That will move the clip 10 frames at a time. If I just hit the greater than and less than keys, I can move it frame by frame. That looks good to me. So let's move over onto this clip and find the point where I sort of look to the side again. And then I'm going to bring this clip in. And I'll use my greater than and less than keys along with shift to kind of get this clip into position. Something like that should do. And in order to make this sequence of clips loopable, what I need to do is find a point when I move out of the way of the door, just to add a marker onto that first clip. I'll copy that clip using Alt and I'll click and drag and lay that on top. I'll set the opacity to 50% there and I'll go to where I'm sort of taking a picture and I'll just move this clip into place. Adding this marker is an important step to loop the clip, which we'll get to at the end. I'll go ahead and select all three of these clips and I'll set the opacity back to 100%. I'll come over here to the second clip and now I need to add a draw mask effect in order to mask out this movement. I'll simply click to create my mask over here. Something like that should do. And I want to make sure that this mask is feathered. If I feather it right now, you can see that there's a slight difference between light and dark. And a lot of that has to do with the light that's coming in from the side and the fact that my body casts a shadow here. If you're shooting indoors and you can control the light, that's obviously the best scenario. But if you're shooting outdoors, you might have to be careful of the way the light changes. So a feather of 100 is not enough for me and I can't go any further unless you type the value in. So I'll click on the value and I'll set it to 500 and that just smooths out this feathering between the two clips. Next, I'm going to scrub ahead until I start to leave the frame somewhere about there. And I will go and add a keyframe to my control points on the draw mask. 
Then I'll move forward until I'm out of the frame, my shadow included. And over here, I will go and adjust these control points off the frame. If you have a look at that now, you'll see how the lighting on the clip changes when that clip comes in. So to fix that, I'm just going to select this cut and hit Command T to add a cross dissolve. And now when the second clip comes in, you don't even notice that lighting change. You can just go ahead and do this for as many clips as you need to. If you do a whole bunch of takes, you'll basically just repeat this process. Now you'll notice that we have this black on the side here that's been cut out, and that is what your clean plate is for. So if I drag and drop that underneath, you can see now that we've got the tree back there on the right hand side. I'm going to hit V just to hide that for a second, because if you have a look, we do have some leaves that are still shown here. And because they blow a little bit in the wind and we have some movement, I would generally put this clean plate on top of all my other clips. The reason for that is I can then isolate the tree and make sure that there's no cross dissolves or masking happening over that tree. With that on top, I'll add the draw mask again, and then I'm just going to go and draw out this little section to the right. And I'll feather this, not as much, maybe like 300. And then using the alt and right square bracket, I can trim this clip and this gap clip at the bottom to match the duration of the sequence of clips. If you had a whole bunch of takes, you can just repeat this process for each take and add as many of the different takes as you like. If you're happy with this and you wanted to loop it, this is where the marker comes into play. So let me show you how to infinitely loop this sequence of clips. I'll hit N to turn my snapping back on and I'm going to trim this clip at the marker. And I'm going to trim my clean plate at the top as well as the gap clip at the bottom, all using the same shortcut. In this particular example, I want what's happening before the marker because that's when I walk into the frame for the first time. So I'm going to put my playhead on this marker. That's very important. Select all the clips, hit Alt G to create a compound clip and I'll hit return. Then I'm going to go ahead and add a new marker at that exact point where my playhead is. Essentially, this point in the sequence of clips is the exact same point as this clip here at the end. Then I'll hold down Alt and click and drag to copy. And on this marker, I'm going to hit Alt and the left square bracket to trim it to that marker. If I play this little section back, you'll see that it loops perfectly at this point. So now that we have a perfect loop, you can go ahead and Alt drag this to copy, or you can go ahead and copy and paste using Command C and Command V as many times as you like. And that's how easy it is to create the infinite loop effect. One more time, here is the final infinite loop that we just created. 